This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an amazing online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need to be the best paintball player you can be. They have got it all. Head over to lonewolfpaintball.com and shop all of your favorite brands. And they also boast amazing customer service and will have this out to you with same day shipping, which is amazing. It's always nice to know that your stuff is on its way immediately so you can start to use it that very next week in a play. Check out their YouTube, Lone Wolf Paintball, and their Instagram, at Lone Wolf PB, and stay up to date with all of their deals and sales. Play the Game Podcast is immensely honored to have them on board, and we cannot wait for you guys to check out LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. Run it back. We've got another major news alert, and this episode is brought to you by HK Army. If you are going to Texas for the NXL Lone Star Major, you are not going to want to miss out on this unbelievable deal as HK Army is offering $20 cases of paint again to anyone attending the event from April 26th to the 28th. And that means anyone, any teams, regardless of sponsorship, can get level 5 exclusive tournament paint for only $20 a case, and the new formula is shooting outstanding. HK is always doing what they can to make the best paintballs more cost-effective for you, and all you got to do is hit up my boy, the Leopard King, Chad Yaya Boucher, who is the sponsorship coordinator for HK Army, to reserve your paint today. Email him right now at chad at hkarmy.com to secure your spot on the paint list. Once again, that's chad, C-H-A-D, at hkarmy.com. And do not wait. This is going to sell out. Email him right now and secure your paint for Texas. PTG family, we love you. Thank you all for continuing to support the PTG show. We are truly forever grateful for each and every single one of you that tunes in on a weekly basis. And if you are enjoying these episodes and want to help with the progress and development of this program, head on over to ptgpodcast.com. Click the orange Patreon link and become a member of our community. That's where you can connect with hungry, like-minded paintball players, enjoy paintball seven days a week in our exclusive chat rooms, and ensure that we can continue to keep cultivating the future of paintball for years to come. It's all love for paintball. It's all love for PTG. We can't wait to see you in there. Head over to ptgpodcast.com and become a member of our community. All right, PTG Nation. We have NFL star running back Tyler Algier of the Atlanta Falcons. This is an incredible episode. Tyler uh, has been playing paintball for a long time out here on the West Coast and actually came out to the Las Vegas Open. Um, He was there at the Summit as well. Has nothing but great things to say about the game, and his mindset is incredible. His energy is awesome. This was a really fun episode. I think you guys are going to absolutely love it. So without further ado, we're going to hop in the show. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. So Tyler Harmon saved that game. He came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. Yo, PTG Nation, we have a banger episode, episode 245 with none other than Tyler Algier from the NFL Atlanta Falcons. Tyler's been getting into paintball. I actually just saw him out in Vegas. He uh, he dropped so in and watched the tournament. So how you doing, Ty? Good to have you here. No, doing great, man. Glad to have you. Glad to be a part of this. Bro, we're we're glad you're Pleasure's a part of Pleasure's all ours, man. man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on now monumental and we even uh i still have your jersey right here we did the old jersey swap out there in uh in vegas and you blessed me with one of these jerseys and i'll cherish it forever man this is no, prize possession hold that prize thought, possession hold he's, that yeah, thought. I mean, he's got the houston heat dope. over there ah, <laughs> gotta gotta go in the closet full of jerseys man yeah man it was a moment yes sir yes sir oh man. get out of here dude that's tight yes, sir, yes, yeah sir. let's go that's Tyler. tight Let's go. It was uh, it was one of the the coolest moments of my life because I love football. I love everything that you're doing in the game, and to have a person like you, man, such an amazing athlete and just all around person, be a part of paintball and love pa- paintball is like a dream come true. And it validates paintball a little bit more because you know by playing paintball how difficult this game is. You know, it's freaking hard, man. See, yeah. I just start I just started up speedball and stuff, but like seeing you like actual pros doing it at the highest level it's freaking game changing because like i'm over here trying to like 
trying to just uh just hold angles and stuff while you guys are over just straight yeah. just going filling it up freaking one hand <laughs> i'm just like what the hell i'm over yeah. trying to take notes but no uh-huh. seeing what you guys do man it's just been a, such a blessing just to see and just experience and it's freaking amazing yeah so talk to us about your uh your paintball journey like when did when did paintball start for you or how did you get into playing because you are 23 if i'm not mistaken is that right yeah, yeah, yeah correct yeah okay yeah shoot so uh i been paintballing so i always went to like sc village like when i was younger and stuff just playing rec ball and then uh ended up getting my first marker i got the project salvo hey. that was like a that was like a little christmas gift hold but on sc village so you you grew up in southern california then yes sir yeah what yes, sir, okay yes, history it's a little socal ie and stuff yeah but yeah man so end up getting the project oh, Salvo. Empire. Hey, I eat. <laughs> let's go Come on, man <laughs> <laughs> let's go <laughs> bro what nice. no so i ended up getting the project Salvo, and then for my birthday i was like when i was like 15 15 and then played until i ended up going to college going to college but then i ended up trying to bring it out because i was like Shit, hold on, hold on. let's see let's see how the fields are in uh in utah yeah and uh they 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 weren't it uh, respectfully <laughs> respectfully yeah like no, no, no nothing's better than cali man yeah. the cali fields freaking um like asg um jungle sc mm-hmm. like no, 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 no better than that man i haven't been to like hollywood sports but like yeah oh for sure we were just, sure, uh, Marcelo we'll and myself, there. we were just out in, uh, at ASG this last weekend for the WCPPL. Mm-hmm. That was a really oh, fun that's tournament. that's right. Yeah. They, wait, who fun. ended up winning that? I wasn't able to catch up there on was... So the, the Premier Division regime won. They're kind of an old school team with a bunch okay. of OG, little old heads. Um, Division three, Sicarios won. Um, yeah, Division okay. two, or, or sorry, Division four. Uh, I'm not sure who won. I know Sicarios got second they have two teams they have you yeah. know, a division three team and a division four team and i'm not sure who won d5 ty do you know yeah i'm actually pulling, pulling it up. up yeah the wcppl to check that out yeah because we was... had to leave or we had to leave kind of halfway through sunday so we didn't get to stay and okay. watch the winners of that one unfortunately um but dude out there yeah it was booming it was like so mike hinman are you, do you are you familiar with who mike hinman is by chance it sounds really familiar he, he runs the WCPPL. He's uh, one of the greatest coaches of all time. He doesn't currently yeah. coach a pro team, but um, he coached us on Aftermath when we were kids coming up through the ranks. Um, and then he's, you know, been like highly recognized as one of the, you know, better player development coaches in the league. Um, he now runs the WCPPL, which was just at ASG. And dude, for a regional league, like you walked around and you felt like it was a small NXL, which is, you know, the national league that you, you went to in Vegas. 125 teams, vendors everywhere. You know, you have like hibachi stands and taco stands and there's music going on. Like yeah. it's a vibe, you know, it's a vibe. You're there and it's it's a good time. So um, it was really incredible just to kind of, you know, be in that atmosphere over the weekend at a regional league, you know, it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's dope. Now, is it only like West Coast teams got to get to play in that or could really? Anyone can happy. come. Yeah, yeah, there was actually okay. a team from, from Chattanooga. Thing. You know, a team uh, from Chattanooga. Chattanooga came out. Yeah, <laughs> Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, Tennessee. They made yeah, the yeah, yeah. They're like an old pro team too. So the WCPPL is like a really prestigious regional league in the nation. It's you know yeah. teams from all over the country will fly there just to kind of see where they match up because it's one of the most competitive regional leagues yeah. as well. So like they'll they'll kind of fly out to you know if they're like a really good East Coast D three team they'll be like oh let's go see how we are in D three over over there at Mike's league, you know, and if they do good there, then like, okay, we might be ready for the NXL. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. And I got to show yeah, love. Uh, Premier was regime division three, Sicarios division four, Sacramento pink division five, iconic division six was AZ Alliance. And the youth is AZ Alliance young guns. So AZ in the house. Let's there go. We go. We go. Yep. All right. So T talk to us about, um, like what it was like playing paintball after that birthday party, getting into the game, getting the gear. Once it bites you, the game, you know, you're like, it's all you can think about. Uh, is that how it was what? for you? <laughs> Bro, it's free. literally went down near every Sunday this off season. Just kind of like a little extracurricular activity besides yeah. football. Yep. Yeah. Because you know, really, like, like, don't get me wrong. It's it's a little, uh, like, it's hard on, it's hard on the joint. Like, you, you can get some stretches, especially if you're, like, down low, hidden angles. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, so like, it kills bro, the legs, bro. What? It's a, it's like yeah. a nice little uh, 
nice little leg burner, just like mm-hmm. like diving and stuff. So it was just yeah. some extracurricular activities, man. And the cool know, thing it's, about it's paintball is it's, it's one of the safest sports in the world too. Like they've done studies on paintball, um, obviously safety first, you're wearing your goggles, you've got your protective equipment on, um, you always have a barrel cover on until you get on the field. So it is a very safe game and everybody in the community, one of the best things about paintball is how everyone looks out for each other and they all make sure like they want you to have the best time of your life out there. No, exactly, bro. Actually, I think I heard that bowling might be over paintball for, (laughs) for like for like i think like it is hey bowling is low bowling bowling is low-key dangerous yeah. <laughs> you ever you ever you ever go to launch one down the lane and you kind of slip i mean you can fall back and crack your head open i could see that being dangerous you oh know? yeah bro it's bad no tell me why because like uh bowling like i picked up bowling as well mm-hmm. but like i'll just go we'll go for an hour but three games is honestly max next minute i'm just like i'm just throwing yeah. in like my arm like everything's just sore, but like yeah. when I paintball, I freaking it's, it's not too bad. Like, like yeah. no, nah, honestly, nah, there's there's some soreness in people, but it's not oh, it's not as crazy as just one arm just freaking just mm-hmm. damn near yeah. throwing it out because well, cause of paintball cause of paintball's ball. crazy because like you gotta run, you gotta slide into this bunker, you gotta like crawl, then you gotta get up, then you gotta yell and communicate what's going on, then you gotta you know make another r- run or you know, it's, so it's like you're never stop moving or communicating. And just same kind of in football, like the, uh, you know, you gotta be hollering out calls. You gotta be making sure that the zones are covered. There's a lot of intricate details that go on in both of the games that we play. And it's exhausting. Nothing like football though. You guys are monsters out there. It's uh, it's really impressive seeing y'all do what you do on the NFL fields. No, I appreciate that, man. No, but what you were saying, cause like you, like that's, I think that's the biggest thing about team sports. Like you can't just be one great guy on one team. Like you got to mm. be surrounded by yeah. really just really your whole team just has to be communicate. You can't just have, you can have one great guy and four, like for example, in people, you have one great guy and four other guys, but like, if you guys aren't on the same page, like yeah. you can't really Not work out the team and no, exactly. And communicating is literally the biggest part for mm-hmm. football. We got 11 guys on the field. All of us got to be on the same page. Like when I'm in the huddle, we all got to be on the same page. Yeah. Um, just hearing the call. Boom. Okay. I got it. Oh, is the quarterback checking it? Okay. I got to understand that check. And they're really just winning, winning your one-on-ones. And then after yeah. we, if everyone just does their job, freaking we're money. We're money. Yeah. After yeah. That. The amount of, the amount of focus that has to go into being an NFL player is really insane, especially with the crowd and the noise and the inability to always hear, you know, and I do want to talk to you about that in a second, but you have to be so dialed in because you, everybody watches on TV, you see a play develop and there's like a man that's wide open. It's like, that was a completely blown coverage, right? So probably there was a lapse in communication or a player didn't get the assignment or, or misunderstood what they were supposed to do. And that's why those kind of big plays will happen sometimes. Um, exactly. and, like the amount of focus from start to finish and it's like three hours where you got to be locked in you know you got to be watching every play you got to be dialed in if you're like you know getting distracted in between plays or when you're not on the field or like that's how you you take yourself out of that that kind of rhythm and that flow state and that understanding of what's going on and how the game's developing like that is such an important you know and in paintball very similar like communication again it's so important if we have a game plan you know and our goal is to attack the the snake side right that's our goal of this play but our Dorito player, like for some reason, wasn't paying attention. And all of a sudden, he goes rogue and wants to go attack down the Dorito side, and he gets shot. We might have all the advantages we wanted on the snake side, but now we're going to lose on the Dorito side because our Dorito player didn't give us time for the play to develop. You know, so it's yeah. like it's the same kind of thing in in football, just on a, on a grander scale. I can't imagine, you know, the noise. What do you guys do to overcome the noise? You know, that's like Dude. always a thing. Yeah, bro, and the freaking you just gotta you try your best just to cancel it, especially on third downs. When I tell you it gets loud, especially when you're on like a like a, it's an away game and stuff. Yeah, yeah. crowd noise, bro. Like all you need yeah. to do is just focus. Like when I hear the call, like if you don't hear it, like repeat it just to make sure you know what you're doing because it's it's stressful to like it's third yeah. down. It's either you're getting the first down, yeah. or they're gonna stop you. You're gonna punt, or if they get a sack, freaking you yeah. end up yeah. putting you back to chains. Like there's just so right. many so many outcomes that like third downs are like literally money downs. Yeah. So like us being able to just try and cancel out the noise as much as we can, like all you hear is just ringing and all you hear is <laughs> set up. And then after that, like they can bring in like, usually third downs is when they bring in just crazy blitzes. Yeah. So like, you just got to know, like, or for me, at least you just got to know 
know your job, know what the O-lines are doing. Cause you gotta, cause like with that crowd noise, you have to hear the O-lines call. So I'm just like, what's the call? Okay. Like, yeah. okay. Like he got this quarterback tells me, and then boom, like you just gotta so like there's, try. And, it's just, so there's it's separate, lot. there's separate calls. Like the O-line will have a call of what they're going to be blocking. And the QB has a call of like what, uh, what the QB will be doing or, 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 you know, what the play is. How exactly yeah, is that no. So like, we'll have a call, like we'll have, um, we'll have, would we'll say yeah we'll, we'll have a car right and then the o line no we are we just all gotta like we know the protection scheme we know the like what we need to do so we just got to make sure everyone's on in sync so like if the o line says a hey, five down but then the quarterback sees it as four down he could probably he'll flip it or like he'll change it okay. got it he could change okay. it or if or if the like because a like quarterback quarterbacks always like have the most power so like if he sees sure. it as this he's like okay i want to block it here or if he sees someone blitzing hey Go to the widest, go to the widest, and then he'll just trump it. Hey, yeah. go to the widest, and then we'll just block it up how we see fit. Amazing. Cool. Yeah, and if you can't hear, like, I, you guys have hand signals and stuff for most of the 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 calls, yeah, or no? A handful. A handful. A handful. I, I, think, I think a lot of the a lot of the signals was more in college. Okay. But, like, but like there, are, there are signals because we can go more of a number or, like, like just like numbers, so like one, sure. one will be a play, two will be a play, like 55, okay. 55. Yeah, yeah. So like that's that's how it was last year, but like more like signals, like oh, actually, I lied. We do have signals. <laughs> do. I was I was gonna yeah. say, like, I feel like I see them all the time, and I've been trying to implement hand signals in paintball for it feels like 10 years. And, and you yeah. know, some players sometimes you use them, and we have nowhere near the noise that that you guys have, but there's definitely times like deep on Sunday, uh at, at a few World Cups in the in the past yeah. where the crowd is not listening to you because the, the crowd's not supposed to engage during the point. It's kind of like golf. You're, you're not yeah. allowed to, cause you're not allowed to coach from the sideline, you know? So if they're that yelling things sense. like there's a, there's kind of a unspoken rule that the crowd is silent. And if, an, if a big move gets made, they cheer and whatever, but they're not yeah. actively, but a few world cups go like they were just yelling the whole time and no one could stop anything. And so on the yeah. field, you like, you couldn't hear anything, you know? And so, then you pair that with you're shooting your gun. You know, those things aren't super quiet, you know, like they're, oh, yeah. they're making noise and then there's other fields going on too. So like you look across field and you're wearing, you're wearing, you know, these goggles, which I would imagine your guys' helmets are, are a lot better than ours and probably, you know, do a much better job of funneling the audio in because they're probably higher tech. I don't know, but like goggles are hard to hear out of, you know, maybe, maybe it's the same. I'm not sure. Um, but your voices are also muffled because we're like yelling into the mask. So hand signals are like a really easy way to look cross field, connect with your, your teammate and, you know, figure out what's going on. Oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. No, nah, shoot. The only person, I mean, the only difference between ours and, uh, ours and yours guys is just the weight. Our mm -hmm. freaking things are freaking damn near 20 yeah. pounds. <laughs> nah, I'm a little over, over it, but it's, it, they're it, heavy. It's, yeah. They're, they're pretty, they're pretty heavy, yeah. but like really, but like oh, there's a rule where only one person can actually have the audio. Right. The audio. So like um the leaders of defense, offense, and special special teams. Mm -hmm. So like he'll probably end up getting the audio. Only actually, I think it's offense and defense, possibly special teams. But like the quarterback, like if it's super loud, he just does this. Yeah. Just so yeah. you can hear the hear the microphone yeah. and the audio. Cause like literally you just gotta it's crazy because like you need to you need to hear it and then the audio cuts out like after like right. 15 seconds, I think. Yeah, no, my bad. I, I just meant the audio even from like other people talking, you know. Just being oh, able to like hear with it. But um, mm -hmm. th that's another thing too that I'm like, it would be so cool for paintball if we could have microphones in our in our helmets, you know? They would just have to monitor that. Yeah, that'd, that'd be dope. That'd it's kind of like Call of Duty or something, you know? Bro, <laughs> that'd be so tight. Um, <laughs> it would funny. also allow you to really highlight communication in paintball. And I think, um, have you watched Go Sports? Have you watched like, you know, pro paintball content or have you just kind of seen it in person? Uh, YouTube clips. But okay. then yeah, okay. I watch like YouTube clips a bit and then um shoot and then the first time in person. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so like the game, if you if you watch the actual matches, it can be hard to follow, right? Yeah. We're still we're still trying to figure out how to showcase the sport in the best way. You know, um, is it an overhead view with telestrators or is it a first person shooter view? We're not sure yet. But one thing's for sure is like communication could be highlighted so much more if if players wore mics or even if your helmets had these, you know, uh, it, 
microphones in them and then the yeah. broadcast can tap into it and you can hear like Tyler and Marcelo, you know, chatting. No, exactly. I think, I think that shirt that that would be for sure. Like some yeah. game changing, game changing stuff. Even if it was think, just for one player, like on each team or yeah, a couple of players, um, because That's a true. lot of the times there is a player who's kind of quarterbacking the the field and making sure everybody knows what's going on. So if you have, you know, the mic on a couple of players that could add a lot of depth to just the, the viewership of understanding like what these guys are talking about and girls, you know, everybody that's out there, how they're deciding to make moves and, and make those decisions, because that is one of the biggest contributing factors to success is the connectivity of the players. Same thing, I think in all sports, you know, that the players have to be synced up. They gotta be on the same page if we're gonna be successful out there. No, exactly. Yeah. Do you feel like, I do, do you think it's because of the point of interest? Like there's no point of interest, for example, football, mm -hmm. basketball, like they have a ball, oh, you can follow, you can follow. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of hard cause like, yeah. we're just we're just shooting at each other and if someone gets to the 50 oh that's the point of interest because he's he yeah. got past that barrier mm -hmm. but now or if someone's fighting uh snake side and then someone's about to get run up on mm -hmm. like it's kind of like right. just finding finding that that's exactly right that is what we've been trying to crack the code on for a while now is you know and you're right the the game naturally builds these points of focus we got to bring your dog on the show. Who do we got? Back Dude, do you hear that? Damn. <laughs> My bad. Hold on. Let me go get her. Let's go get it. Yeah. This, Bro, is our, what? Hey. this is our favorite part of the show. We get to get Come everybody's on. animals. Bro. Yes. Uh, he goes, bro. He goes, you hear that? <laughs> this is the best. Is I love meeting best? everyone's animals. T, this is perfect. Here we go. Who, who do we got? Go. Oh, oh we got no. Them. Stop it. Look oh, at her. Oh, we got honey shit. bones, man. Honey, oh, buns. honey buns. Honey. Look how happy she is. Now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, You're a star. Molecule. Look at Honey Buns is on the show. Let's go, Honey Buns. Let's honey, go. say hello to the guys. What? Huh? Yo, yo, what, yo. what kind of pup is she? She looks like a mix. She is a Yorkie poodle mixed with wiener. Oh my goodness, dude. Yeah. She's so yeah, her, cute. her mom just freaking walked out to yeah. go to the gym and she has a lot of anxiety when oh. she leaves. That's yeah, okay. I, I hear you. that's. That's yeah. actually so funny. My my girlfriend, uh, her they're like family dog. It's like I've like adopted the dog. I've kind of commandeered yeah. the dog. You know, I'm like that's my dog now. But it's a Shih Tzu, and she's uh, she's a you know little old lady. She's 14 mm -hmm. years old, but she's hey. the sweetest dog. But when I when I'm doing the show, she yeah. will just sit there and bark and bark, and mm -hmm. like I have to go pick her up. You know, <laughs> that's funny, dude. She, she like just wants to be held, dude, bro. What? That's it. Shout yeah, it's a honey buns. Hey, honey uh, buns. Ty, what's oh. it like being a young, up and coming running back in the NFL, playing for the Atlanta Falcons? I do want to talk about your squad as well because you've got a sick lineup. You guys are looking hungry and ready to, on, to accomplish some goals out there. So, what's it been like for you? And this is your, your third season going into your third season pro here. Third season, man. It's been really just a blessing, bro. It's been a blessing, been dreaming of this, dreaming of this opportunity since a kid. Then ended up, ended up just stri just striving for it because I ended up, I was a preferred walk on and and in going into college going to the BYU so like yeah. I always had a chip on my shoulder always striving for always striving to be a better version of myself mm. and just striving to be great so I ended up um, end up getting a scholarship with a go by end up getting a scholarship two years after and then after that finished off having two good years at BYU and then shoot end up taking my chance at the league and then end up getting drafted fifth round. So it's been a blessing. You really just got to keep being a sponge. Mm -hmm. uh, you just got to soak in the information like, and just don't get comfortable. I think that's the, mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing. Cause like, for example, for example, 1000 or um, what that end up getting a thousand yard rusher. They draft, you draft another running back. I could have easily said, Oh, they draft another running back. I'm just gonna like, what am I going to do? Yeah. But I always, I was always ready. I was always ready because, like, you can't. Oh shoot, what's she doing? Like, you can't because, like, yeah, I was just always like, you just always got to be ready. Like, you can't get comfortable like with highs and lows. Like, I, yeah. I could easily just got complacent. Like, oh, I know my role. I know this. I know that. But like, just being ready because you never know any anything. It's it's National Football League. It's life. Anything could happen. So you just got to be ready for whatever opportunity comes your way. And I think. I've done that my whole shoot, my whole career, yeah. freaking college, high college, high school to the league. So, 
you know, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting times. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, man, that mindset is so important. Like you're right. What, you know, it's Tyler always says a, a, a quote that his dad would, what are you going to do about it? Right. So, you know, they, they bring in another running back that should motivate you if anything, right. That's like, okay, let's go. We have good competition. We can help each other grow. We're on the same team. You know, that's how, that's how we make this organization better. That's how I make myself better. You know, yeah. you're not comfortable from that. That's the mindset that separates the good from the great. Honestly, it really is, Exactly. Um, you know, and, and look, actually, you know, you ended up having a stellar, stellar season. So like, you know, that kind of stuff. And I think at the, at the risk of uh, looking kind of silly, cause I watch a lot of football, but I'm definitely no expert. Um, yeah. It seems like the league is definitely moving more towards having multiple running backs. There's almost not like any clear cut backs anymore. Right. It's like, you want no, a dual exactly. attack. You want exactly. that. Right. And that's how you, your team becomes super, uh, super dangerous. Um, so, <laughs> and all good with the pup too. I know you're, I know you're doing your what? best. I know you're, I know you're doing your best. <laughs> what? No, yeah, that's, that's, ex that's exactly it because like, we don't, there's no just one bell cow running back. Like you got to yeah. have multiple guys yeah. to run the rock because any, anything, like, like I said, anything could happen, but just right. like having those guys ready. Like if you're in the building, if you're in the roster, you're on, you're on any team, like they believe in you, they believe what you're going to do. So you just can't shy away from, Oh, cause like you said, it was freaking like once they, once they dropped the beat on our, like a lot of people were saying, Oh, why would they draft? You just did what you did. Like, bro, I took it as motivation. I took it as damn, I'm going to have another brother in the room. Yeah. And I'm going to be able to freaking learn off him because he's like, we're two different backs. Mm -hmm. Like we come, mm -hmm. we complement each other so well. And that's, that, that's my dog. Like we're like, yeah. we're like this. So like awesome. having him in this building, like he, like learning from him what he can do because he's, he can, he can run the ball obviously. And then he could catch out the backfield. He can catch out the backfield as well. That's like his main, like one of his main traits as well, just being versatile. And that's really what I'm trying to strive to do. So me learning off him, it's been just a straight blessing with us being the work, work with each other. It's been great. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, man. It, you know, I could tell just by the way you talk about it, you're a great teammate. And that uh, it kind of leads into something else that I want to ask you in, you know, you don't have to talk about your team, but just kind of in the league in general. Do you think that successful teams uh, across the board have more chemistry and are, are, you know, have a lot more individuals on the team that actually care about each other than the other teams? Or is it all just kind of like a business and it comes down to coaching and talent? You know, or, or is because in paintball, the closeness of a team really matters, you know, like none of the none of the pro players are really getting paid a whole lot of money. So you have to really want to be there. You know, you have to buy into the system. I, I'm wondering how much that translates to the league. Like you said, buy into the system. I think that's really like the most important part, because like every coach has different philosophies, different like different coaching styles, like like so like for example, a new coach can come in and then oh you gotta buy into what he believes, or another coach says, Oh, you have to buy in what I believe, or you can just leave. But like I yeah. think just being bought into whatever system it is, I think that for sure plays a big a big part of the coaching side. The coaching side of things are like and like how you're gonna like take into coaching and all of that. And then relationship wise with your team is I think chemistry is for sure a big part of everything everything like you can like work like not even not even just uh work if it's work family like relationships like, i think you have to have chemistry and everything so like i feel like a lot of the great teams they're always they're pretty they're pretty close because like that's my like yeah that's like family. if you're if you're going to war if you're going to war with someone like you i would yeah. hope that you would want to know who you're going to war with so like just having like especially if your blood sweat tears got cut like all of that, I would hope that, like, that chemistry is there. So, like, for my team, shoot, my team now, last year, like, I thought our chemistry was, our chemistry was great. I thought, every like, everyone played for each other. Like, we had, we were just a play, a play short, a play short, which was, because, like, with the league, it's, it's, it's literally one play away. It's tight, yeah. It's the same so, thing over here, one, you know? Yeah, game of away. inches. Yeah. yeah. Game of inches, which is, yeah. like, which is crazy to me because like when I came in, when I came into the league, there were, we had our first year win was seven to 10. There was like six or seven games. We lost by three points or less, mm. which is, or like, yeah, three points or a touchdown, which is crazy. Cause like, we were, cause like for me, I was just like, yeah, we should have won those games. But it was just like, mm -hmm. you don't know, you're not going to pick on one play. 
but like it's always what could have I done better what like you always trying to like take that accountability so you can learn from it learn from it and then try to do better just so that just so it doesn't happen again so I think really just taking accountability for yourself and then working on working across working across the room and stuff and I'm sure well, that's that a- you're watching film digesting the information so that you can be a better version all the time right have to yeah it's have right. to yeah what what does that look like your your film study do you are you watching film uh, every single day how many hours a day how much time do you spend and and what kind of film do you watch do you watch of yourself of your opponents of everything yeah we yeah we do everything we got a whole a whole regimen so like obviously we'll watch film in the in in the office but then after that i'll come home i'll watch film i like i always get a head start of what our opponent's doing so like if they're blitzing i'll watch the mike and will backer but then like if it's base downs i'll watch third down the next or that night so we could so i can get a head start just so so when our coach plays it the third down clips i already have an idea of what they're already doing so it's kind of like just refreshing refreshing and then to really just watching the watching defense, see what their main coverages are, see what the D line's doing. So like for me, the D line and the linebackers is just really important just because I'm in the trenches like that. And especially if they're blitzing, I just know if the DN's like this, if the DN's in the nine, he's going to keep that gap. So the wheel can come or if he's shaded inside, he might stem, boom, and someone else might blitz. Like it's, it's a lot of configurations that yeah. like you never know what, a def- or like you never know what a defense can do but you have an idea based mm-hmm. on how much film you want how much film you watch what's their tendencies like just just all of that absolutely so uh the the film you watched the night before i assume that's not mandatory that's you deciding to on your own time right yeah nothing nothing yeah mandatory. see it's, see it's all just that extra it's that extra work that one percent yeah that, absolutely that will get that will that will Little, that's that one percent that I believe that it's from missing a blitz and knowing what. Oh, oh, the safety's down. Oh, the nickel's coming. Oh, that's a bluff. He's coming the other way. Like, yeah, it's just it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. that. It's that one percent. In in paintball, there's a very similar thing, especially if you get to watch a team on a layout, right? You know, you could you could be watching. It's a five on five breakout, and you know, I'll look for tendencies. Like, okay, if the other team if they lose their wide player. Does their two try to fill out right away, or is he content mm. sitting there? And do they try to win down the other side, right? Like this, uh, this gives you really good, valuable pieces of information that in game time, if you shoot their wide player off the break, you know, okay, I have to contain because this player is going to try to make a fill wide, or I don't need to worry so much about their two. He's going to stay there for a little bit. Let's watch the other side, you know, and you can communicate the shift and, and the switch uh, accordingly. But you know, those kind of tendencies, you <laughs> so much reveals itself in film. And in, in paintball, people kind of always ask, they're like, you know, what exactly do you look for and what are you watching for? And it's hard to explain. I always say just just yeah. watch and it'll it'll end up revealing itself. If you watch enough times, you'll pick up patterns. You'll be like, oh, okay, when when they're in this kind of formation, if it's a two on three or a three on two, you know, this is what these players like to do. It's it's what they're comfortable with. You know, this player's not comfortable uh in that type of bunker. You know, this player yeah. likes to be in this type of bunker. You know, these things will kind of reveal themselves, but you have to do the work. You know, and what I, what I love about what you said is that again, you know, you, you say none of it's mandatory, but I assume the stuff with the team in person is mandatory, isn't it? Oh yeah. No. no, Yeah. So like what I, what I'm referring to is like, you're watching film the night before so that you're prepared to watch that same film the next day, which is epic. I love that. You know, like preparing yourself so that you could already be a step ahead when you're in the, in the meeting room with the team. You know, and you can you can add valuable insight because of that. That is championship mindset. That's championship level mindset right there. Pure. No, it's, period. It's, it's the it's the only way, man. Because I feel like if you want to like everyone wants to be great, but like what what are the little things that you're doing that's outside of what everyone's watching? Because like that's what uh, all my coaches said. Like from little league to now, like what's that extra stuff that's you're not doing behind closed doors yeah. that mm-hmm. you aren't going to get credit for, but you know inside this is going to make you better that's like what are you going to do for example like um i think i saw i saw i saw what you were doing ty like your little regimen of uh Mm -hmm. of um like your drills yeah and i I actually like a lot of people just want to like post to show people that they're doing stuff but i i'm i'm doing all these types of things when people aren't looking as well like what you're talking about 
um, and trying to get that 1%. And for me, those drills are just like shooting like an NBA player would shoot free throws or shoot, shoot the ball around. You know, it's muscle memory. I'm getting all of my, my muscles ready to do what I need them to do when I go perform on the pro field. So I'm like already getting dialed in. But it's, uh, it's that, it's the video, it's, you know, the little nuances that you see here and there on, on film, like Marcelo was talking about, um, just anything possible to get, like you're saying, Tyler, that 1%. And might I say, man, great name. Great name. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. No, no, I like how I want you because, like, for example, like, you can say you do three sets of 12, but, like, if you didn't like the way that set fell, I'm sure you're yeah. doing it again just so you can perfect it. Because, yeah, mm-hmm. everything's not going to be perfect, but the way – if you want to if you want to get better at snapping or if you want to get better just hitting that exact spot, mm-hmm. you're going to do it. Because, yeah. like, it's literally it, – totally. if you want to be great, that's what you're doing, man. And that, that just gets you in the door like that, that grants you admission to the field. The next level is like, we're working hard, but you got to work super smart too. We got You have to be extremely intelligent to make great decisions. And I don't care what you're doing, whether it's sports or business or your relationships, you can work hard at all these things, but if you're not working intelligently and with a purpose and with a real focused intention, you're going to miss it. So it has to be this marriage of like this grit, this grit mentality, you know, this, this never quit mentality and diving into the books, diving into the film, diving into any, anything that can add more resonance to you as an intelligent player as well. And there's so many different things from like, you know, philosophers or, you know, this, that, and the other book that you could read that could add to you understanding something that has nothing to do with paintball, but maybe marries to paintball somehow and you become a little bit smarter. Or maybe you are just watching film or, or doing the work in the paintball realms, but there's so many unique ways that we can always get better every single day. No, exactly. That's a yeah. blessing there. Straight That's up. Church. That is the ultimate blessing right there is to be creative. And we're so lucky as athletes to be able to go out there and be extremely creative in our crafts. So like you as a running back, you have to be extremely creative in picking all these routes and these decisions and these choices. And now like coming into your third year pro, how have you been able to start to read things, read situations and players a little bit differently? Cause I'm sure you're starting to know people. And then also it's gotta be difficult because in your ranks of the NFL, things change so quickly, management teams, players. So you gotta be always super hungry and reading those seams. Bro, what you have, yeah, bro. It's freaking, yeah. it, it's a, it's a, it's crazy, man. Cause like for, sure. for, for me, like when I go into my craft and just like try to learn some new nuances, cause like when it's our decisions, we have to be, yeah. we're just like that. So like if a guy's, if I'm running out on an option round and a guy's man on, like, does he have inside leverage? Does he have outside? Like, like mm-hmm. even before the play is going, we'll do like a little man, a man zone tell. So like, we'll, we'll just say like the, the tight end ends up going across is it a man or is it zone? But then he'll end up coming back just to the final formation. So like, boom, mm-hmm. you'll get an indicator on that. But if we go in man and you got to know, oh, am I hot? Are they blitzing? Am I, do I have to get my head around fast? So in a millisecond. And just, bro, what? <laughs> yeah. And like, that just comes down to the training and like the training and like just training your brain, training with the quarterback, just training mm-hmm. like a, hey, really, it's really just watching film. Yeah. Like, I think that's the, like, cause like, you're not going to get on the field if you don't know the playbook. That's the biggest. So, like, when you when you talk about intellectual and and smart, like, you have to – like, it's literally what you're doing. Because, like, obviously, going into the league, everyone's strong, everyone's fast, but the mental side, that's what gets people. Mm. Because, like, if you're not – meant, like, if you can't hold in the playbook, if you can't just, just have that football knowledge – or, like, not even football knowledge, just, like, the game, like, the game – yeah. Like two, like if you don't know it's, if it's two minute drill and you're still running up the field. Yeah. Well, football you know, IQ. Yeah. You football know, IQ, like, there, there it is. yeah, hundred percent. You, so you, what? you got it. You got to understand the game. You got to understand the game. You got to know how to play yeah. the game. PTG. Yo, hey, that's hey. PTG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. You literally just have to understand the game. Freaking play the game the way yeah. that, you know, like, yeah, it's a, like it's literally a kid's game. Like the way we grew up, we, I grew up playing football as the, in little league to now, to now freaking in the big league. Like it's, you just got to know, remember that like, this is fun. Like you gotta, yeah. like, yeah, it's a bit, there's a business side, 
like put that all aside. Like you got to remember, bro, like you got here because you have fun playing this game. And that's why I freaking, I love it so much. Yeah. Like just knowing that fun aspect in what you're doing and that you can get better every day and just watch, like, say you make a mistake. Oh, I can watch film on that. Okay. I know what I need to do better to make sure that doesn't happen again. Now, Freaking, what can I do to, what are the drills? What's the coaching points that I need to listen to and be a sponge to intake all that information to make sure it doesn't happen again? And then, whoa, oh, I don't got to worry about that anymore. I can go on something. I can learn, start learning something new after that. Do you remember uh, a, a moment or the age or, or when it was that you decided you wanted to be a professional football player and you were going to devote your your life to, to doing that? Mm. I gotta say when I was like nine. Young. Yeah, nine. I was yeah. I was young. But like I think that was like the dream goal. Right. The dream goal. Play play in the league. But like it was just so far that yeah. like I didn't like I didn't like hold on it because the biggest thing coming into high school was to get a scholarship. That was my biggest that was the biggest goal was to get the scholarship. And then so family doesn't have to worry about school. I can just go play ball and get my degree. That was the biggest thing. But then once I got into college, because uh, I, I was a preferred walk-on, preferred walk-on at BYU. And then once I got into college, like, it was, school was and hard. Then, hey, Ty, can you explain to the listeners hard. what a preferred walk-on is? Because there's probably people mm. out there who probably don't even know what that is. Yeah, preferred walk-ons basically – like you're walk on, you're you're walking on, but like mm-hmm. the you're you have a spot on the team. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah, yeah. But so basically, uh, like you're part of football, you don't have to pay for football, but then school wise, I you have to take care of it yourself. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's how that's was it about. playing for BYU? Talk to us about college years and how much fun that was, and just being in the trenches as a young, hungry college kid looking to make a way and hopefully get to the NFL. Yeah, man, it was a uh, love, love, love Provo, man. Provo, Provo is good. You know, yeah. if you have, have you guys ever been to been to Utah? I've never been out oh, to yeah. Provo. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Provo. So my my little nice. brother, my little brother, uh, his wife lives. Her family's from Provo. Oh, whoa. no way! I swear to God. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. There we go. Hey, that's yeah. dope, man. That's a small yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. My my little brother lives like two hours from there in St. George now. Okay. Maybe oh, yeah, it's yeah, a little yeah. further. Maybe it's a little okay. further. But uh, yeah, there. yeah, Provo's where okay. she's from. Dang, hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, bro, it's so nice. So beautiful. I think because, like, where our practice facility was, like, you see the mountains, like, just a straight picture. Like, it looks like a, yeah. like a green screen. Like, if you're just looking, like, a huge green screen, it's, it's so nice. But I love I loved Provo, I love BYU. It, shoot, I, I had no bad bad experiences. You know, I, you hear a lot of stories about BYU, but it's, <laughs> some are true, but some some are not. Some, you know, <laughs> some are I, it's fun though. Yeah. I, it was it was good. Yeah, man. It was good though. Yeah, college was probably crazy as you know as it should be. College years, <laughs> bro. What? Yeah. So That's when when yeah. when did the you know I totally get that you know nine years old obviously the dream be in the league but that's a, a far off dream right but now you're getting closer and closer you're you know you now you're you're playing college ball you're having some good success when did it become real for you that like hey this is this is gonna happen for me i just gotta stay on this track yeah bro so let me tell you so preferred walk all right but then the two years i was i redshirted my first year redshirt means it's it's a it's a free year of football mm-hmm. so I ended up redshirting and then the next year got switched to linebacker, got switched to linebacker, played after it was after the third game after USC, played my first game against Washington. And then towards the end of the season, injuries happened in the running back room. They switched me back, finally got the chance in the bowl game. A bowl game is uh, an extra game for colleges. That's like big. if you get six, six wins, six wins or more, you're automatically into a bowl. Yeah. So then, um, end up taking my chance or getting that uh, opportunity in the bowl game and then freaking killed it and the next minute got the got the scholarship right after that and then said hey you're gonna play running back the rest of the time here and then ended up fighting for the starting job won the starting job and then uh shoot held it for two had pretty pretty good um pretty good two years shout out to my boys 
My O line yeah. can't. O line receivers, tight ends can't do, can't do like that's from yeah. BYU to now. I can't do anything without them, man. Those, those yeah. are my dogs, man. Hell yeah. But like, yeah. Then like after the after my senior year, or really because of COVID, we I still had two more years of eligibility, so I kind of left early. I've been in okay. college for four years. Yeah, like, it's time. It, it, it's time. <laughs> it's it, it, it time yeah, yeah bro it, it was stressful times for sure but like everyone kept asking like hey are you gonna go to lee are you going to but like i can't think about that you that that goal right now i have to worry about oh who are we playing next yeah of course like, i gotta worry about like you have to worry about this week because like i kind of work i kind of live like not day by like i have my goals but then like just living you just gotta stay in the present you can't really, get to those goals without accomplishing what's in front of you, you know. Exactly. That's bottom line. <laughs> exactly. Bottom line. Bro, what? Like you can't you can't you can't overthink what you want to do because you have to worry about the present. Like if yeah. you handle the present, that future is gonna come closer and closer more than you think. So like I kept getting asked, Oh, are you gonna leave? What are you gonna leave? Like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna stay? I'm just like, I'm I'm not worrying about that. Like, just keep that energy, please. Mm-hmm. Nowhere near Absolutely. me. Because like you don't need that outside noise. Hundred percent. Like I, I'm pretty good at canceling it out, but like just having that. Hey, what are you doing? What are yeah. you doing? It's just like I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. I'm just yeah. trying to. I'm just trying to win the rest of my games. Yeah, do you? But, uh, do, do you? Do you think playing linebacker for a little bit helped you as a running back? I think. Meant or uh, seeing the what the defense is doing. Yeah. Really, that understood that like clicked right after yep. that so like i was like because like you know coming in as a high school player and they could trying to learn because like i really i was i was trying to learn just the offense but then really learning what being able to switch over to the defense and so, then learning what they can do like learning what they do what i did and then switching back to running back it just just like ids and all that it's it was really like just like that so it's yeah very similar in paintball again like you know we have positions and roles we have like snake players dorito players you know we have our our ones our twos and threes is the easiest way to break it down the ones are the attackers twos are like the mid players three or more in the back they become twos but in any case it's important in in practices anytime i'm coaching or tyler's coaching we make the players play all over the place because you know you might be a three but until you go and have to play the one role, you won't you don't really understand what the one needs or what the one is looking for. So like when we're preparing for an event, it's really important for all of our players to play all the spots because then you get a you get the perspective from the other point of view and you go, oh, OK, if if when I'm in that role, I just attack here, that player is going to have a hard time defending it because I was just there and I had a hard time defending it. You know, um, it, it just kind of exposes you to that kind of like what you were talking about with, you know, football IQ, it's same thing with paintball IQ. It gives you a better overall awareness of the game, you know, so you can have a better understanding of what everyone's trying to do out there. I felt like that's just even like just versatility, like versatility. That just adds more, like, yeah, like like this, it just adds more to your bag. Like, oh, I'm understanding what my guy's doing because I'm like, okay, I understand. So like, say I'm a three, I go to a one. Okay, I'm understanding, I'm understanding what he's doing. So I need to make sure I'm shooting this. And then just like, yeah, I guess it all just, just comes together. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I love what you talked about earlier about um, just being in the moment, being patient and, and not thinking too far ahead because we have, we have divisional players or just players in general who want to climb the ranks and go pro maybe. And they ask us all the time, you know, like, how do I do this? How do I go pro? What do I, how do I get on this team? And that is the best answer ever is you just got to stay focused on what's right in front of you give it everything you got and then naturally you're going to draw into your reality better circumstances or or that higher place that you're trying to get to by being diligent in the moment so i think that it's really cool that you approach at the highest level of nfl just you know crushing every moment and then also your journey is spectacular dude the fact that you the the route that you took to get to the NFL is truly spectacular. It wasn't promised. It wasn't, there was nothing promised. You know what I mean? You had to work tooth and nail. You were, you were red shirted. You walked, you know, like the, the way that you made sure you were poised and always there and always ready to, to make that jump when it was necessary, when the door opened up, that was all you being prepared and putting everything that you have. So I think that that's gotta be highlighted because that wasn't an easy journey. That path was not like, a cookie cutter path that was just, you know, wide open. That was a, 
that was a long path that you took. No, I, no, I appreciate that, man. It's literally just making yeah. the most out of every opportunity that that you get that you get served. Like, mm-hmm. like just making the most out of every every opportunity. Just like whether you're learning learning from it or just you just take it, just take it and run. Yeah. And you just gotta, you just gotta like just make the most out of make the most out of ever all of it. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Okay, we got to talk about uh, Kirk. Y'all picked up. Kirk hey, I, I wanted to bring that up too. <laughs> yeah, the boy is in the building. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be. That's fun, a big man. pickup. Yeah, bro. What? No, we're so we're so excited. He's a great guy. Ended up just talking to him. Uh, talking to him all week, but yeah. we ended up yeah. just chatting it up today. No, it's so great. Yeah, um, yeah. He just seems like so much fun to be around. I'm sure chatting on the phone with him is a good time. You know, he's just he's got great energy. <laughs> Bro, what? The Kirkle, Kirkle Bang energy. Yeah, Kirkle yeah. chain. That's what they call it. <laughs> yep, Kirkle bro, chain. What? Kirkle chain. That's it. <laughs> he's been uh, he's been having the water all over the chest all you know these seasons. He's getting it done. He's having I'd fun. Be, I'd be freezing whenever I see them chains, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that quarterback series on Netflix made me really like him. Mm-hmm. Bro, what? Yep. Ooh, yeah. I, I, dang, I didn't. Even, I forgot. I forgot he was on that. Yeah. Did you watch yeah. it? You got to get in there. Bro, I don't disappoint it. me. You didn't watch that? Uh, and then I, I, actually, I, I, I only watched Marcus's part. Yeah, Respect yeah. Him. Respect <laughs> Okay, him. okay, okay. Uh, Respect You know what I know? Yeah, yeah, all know. right. A-Town, bro. Come on. A-Town, be, let's yeah. go. How do you get not watch receipt. Mahomes, though? How do you not watch Mahomes to see what he's cooking in the kitchen? You Don't you want to see the ingredients? He's got some good ingredients. Ah, uh, See, that's on me. I was I was actually even gonna ask you if uh if by chance you listened we had David Montgomery on on PTG yeah. la, uh, uh, before last season I was wondering if by any chance you listened to that I'm sure it's so different for you guys there's such a wider scope of oh, players yeah. and, and all that but I know for like in the paintball world I mean I'm like borderline psychotic I think Tyler is too if any pro or coach releases content I'm pretty much going to tune in. Even if it's like, you know, doesn't get my undivided attention, I'm going to skim it and, and listen, you know? It's like, no, again, that's facts. Just... <laughs> that's yeah. facts. Hey, man, no, that was on me, man. No, because, like, bro, like, during season, I'm so, because, like, it came out, came out during season. It did, yeah. actually. I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah. So, like, just, like, he was skimming through the ATO parts and stuff, seeing I, what, that's fair. Seeing what was behind yeah. the scenes and stuff, see, seeing what they, but I knew I knew he was uh they were doing a recording because like they literally had cameras every day just freaking for, uh recording Marcus. Yeah. So it was that's like, dang, yeah, like, I... what is this for? And then just seeing <laughs> seeing his parts. But honestly, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna fall back. Yeah, okay. and watch it. I'm gonna fall back okay. and watch it all with All right. Actually, right. especially especially because my dog Kirk was Kirk on was on it. Yeah, on, dude. Man. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. And that I actually great. saw you on that. Um, you were in a couple segments on there as well, Ooh. running around. Yeah, having some fun. Yeah, man. That's I gonna be exciting. That. Uh, he's he's a hard worker. He's hungry, and I'm sure he's gonna do some some magic out there on the field like he does. No, uh, man. So so just so excited. Yeah. I think just uh just our over just our overall team in general. You know, new coaching staff. You know, it's uh. It's uh, just excited for this whole troop, excited for the opportunity just to work with these guys, learn from them, get our chemistry going mm-hmm. so we can shoot, do, make some make some magic happen, hopefully in the yeah in the near future. Yeah, Big and Ty- Tyler, you say, if you don't mind talking about, um, you know, I'm sure it's pretty generic for most of the, the uh, NFL teams, but you said you're already starting like phase one of, of you know, training camp and to me, that seems kind of crazy. It seems like the Super Bowl just happened. So you guys don't really get much of an off season. Shoot. It depends if you make the playoff. Well, that's, that's, that's fair. That's, that's fair. That's, but yeah, does that's your, does your start time change for other teams? Like would, okay. Yeah. Got so, it. so because we have a new coaching staff, they're allowed to send guys in early. So like, I, I think the earliest is like April 2nd or April 1st. So we ended up being part of that because of the new coaching staff, but then, the actual time I think when teams can is like April fifteenth. Okay. Yeah, April fifteenth is when I shoot. I thought I thought we were gonna come April fifteenth, and then they said, "Hey, you gotta come for like we're reporting April 2nd. And I was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. So okay. they end up changing that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Say Let's less. Get to work. Hey, <laughs> say less. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, that that's, ends up. Yeah. yeah. So then you have. Obviously, you got to be in the ATL, be at the training facilities, be on site. And then when you're not 
at in ATL. You live out on the West Coast, and you've been born and raised out there your whole life, I would imagine, right? Whole life, man. Yeah, that's amazing. Yes, that's amazing. Yeah, and, the good and, old Fontana. Yeah, Have baby. You. And I'm sure it's a whole nother skill set, um, being able to navigate having new staff, new coaches, new you know these types of things are on a revolving door pretty quickly in the NFL. So learning how to like really come together in a timely fashion as well has got to be a skill set that you have so that you can get the most production out of everybody um, going into this new season. And I know a player like you is hungry and motivated and, and excited at the fact that you're starting early. I see you on the IG getting it in in the gym. You know, you're you're staying active and making sure that you're attacking everything. So kind of talk to us about how it is like navigating that and then just uh, being able to like be adaptive with the new systems that are always getting in place. It's got to be kind of like a juggling act. Bro, what? Like, I felt like I just freaking got the, got our last playbook down. Yeah. And just started getting comfortable and then freaking <laughs> boom, coaching came. So like yeah. now it's just, gotcha. you're, you're literally starting getting gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now it's this, everything, like everyone's got a clean slate. Like we're mm -hmm. all starting, we're all starting new. Like, yeah. so like just bringing, making those relationships. Cause like you see players leave all the, or like, like it's an, it's an unfortunate business. Like yeah. mm -hmm. it's, it's freaking crazy, but you see players leave all the time, but actually experiencing a coach coaching staff. Cause like I, I didn't even have that at BYU. So yeah. like experience, experiencing a crate, like a new coaching staff is just mm -hmm. like, dang, like this is like, this, this actually happened. So like, yeah, I yeah. actually had that under my under my belt and really just experiencing that learning from a whole new coaching staff and fruit shoot learning a whole new offense. Yeah. Which I think that the, it's, it's exciting though. The book is like, these playbooks are no joke too. They're serious business. It's like a man, Bible. They're like the Bible. <laughs> man. Good. Good thing. I got it electronically, man. It's a good thing. I got it on my tablet just to, yeah. but what it's, they're pretty, they're pretty big between formations, yeah. concepts, shoot, mm -hmm. freaking protection, run game. I know it's yeah, uh, it gets big, man. For a so, while. so what kind of stuff are you? What does your week look like right now? What's your training uh, routine, and you know, what are you kind of going through with the team and all that stuff? Yeah, so Monday through Thursday are our work days. We got Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. But then, like eight o'clock meetings, because we're in phase one, it, we they can. It's like a max four hours with like NFLPA and all that stuff, like regulations of what okay. you can do so like we'll start at eight and at 12 and then um and then like within that it's just meetings and workouts cool but then yeah so it's not it's not, not too bad just like getting getting the formality getting yeah. meeting with the coaches like between offense defense special teams and all that i think just getting all of that going start learning you start learning the offense as fast as you can the formations and then we get into concepts soon. So it should be. Yeah. It's a it's non -stop. crazy times, man. Non-stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Non-stop, nice. bro. Yeah. And, and then, just so you know, uh, you came out to Vegas. We actually, we messaged and then you made the journey out to uh, to Vegas to watch Pro Paintball at the highest level. And I just want, it was a good show too. It was a fun yeah, time out great there. Show. We fell short, unfortunately. Marcelo's team took the tournament and it was a crazy finals out there. It was a wild finals. But uh, Major League Paintball. Open our ass. <laughs> yeah, you bro. guys came back. Bro, how, how was it? Oh, my, my bad. The, no, yeah. yeah. Bro, how was it? Like, how was that? Mm -hmm. Like, just being Get down. What? What? <laughs> no, no, no. You you were, you guys were down like 0-3. 3, -0, 0 yeah. Yeah. Just like, like, how was that? Like, like, what were you guys saying? Like, what kind of like motivate? Or like, you guys are just like, hey, we've been here. Like, don't like, <laughs> yeah, no exact... one like falter. It was exactly that. I mean, honestly, in the last three or four seasons, our team's been in that situation on Sunday. Sunday's yeah. like where it's the elimination games, right? So it's, you know, win or go home. We've been in that situation so many different times in the last three or four years that this group has gotten really comfortable. So, you know, there were two things. We were down 3-0, but there was still a ton of time on the clock. Like it felt like... Hell of time. Yeah, it was like, I looked up, it was like 11 minutes and everybody was really calm and collected. There was just a few things that we needed to fix. You know, we weren't surviving yeah. the breakout. And we were allowing them to run all over the place. So if those two things continued, we would have lost the match 6-0 probably, yeah. you know. But we're like, look, we just have to address those things. And those happen to be two things that we're really good at. So, you know, it was, it was strange. I mean, honestly, the team felt like 
the match was just getting started, you know, so yeah. much time on the clock and, you know, we were able to score a point and now the game's a lot closer. You get a little bit of momentum. And as soon as it went into overtime, it felt pretty good for us, you know, just because th that team hadn't quite been there yet. Um, yeah. And, you know, you know how it is in sports. Usually a team has to get to a spot, get to, a, you know, a, a place in a tournament or an event or a game and uh, maybe lose and then get back there again. And that's when they'll win. You know, it's like it's yeah. rare that, you know, a team goes all the way their first first go at it and wins the whole thing. So, you know, we had a lot going our way, but man, they played so good for a young team with no like superstars. Uh, they have one of the best coaches in the league in the history of the sport, I would say, hands down. Like that coach yeah. has brought a level of professionalism. When you talk about like the playbook or yeah, the playbook, you know, Mike Bianca, their coach, he has such an in-depth set of things that, you know, they go through in their practice and their tournament that no other team does, you know? Yeah. Um, so it shows that, you know, he's been able to take these players with not much experience um, and really do something fantastic you know that's like kind of unheard of in our sport it's a great story so yeah. uh you know we we kind of joked about this on another episode but I, i'm dead serious like part of me also was like eh, if they beat us i'm okay with it you know it's them i'm kind of a fan you know i'm like i'm kind of Bro, a fan <laughs> i'm kind yeah. of a fan you Bro, know what yeah but then immediately in his mind he goes nah yeah but no you know gotta yeah. try to shut it down but, <laughs> let, uh, me, let, yeah. let me let me try to, as much as yeah that'd be freaking awesome not yeah, today awesome. Yeah, I, I can't write not today. Thing. You're just freaking scheming up stuff. You're just like, eh, <laughs> not today, man. Let, yeah, yeah. Let's tie it up. Not, not today, not today. Um, but no, it's a, it's a great story for paintball. It really is because it shows like, you know, our sport is in a, in an interesting space. Like ten years ago, uh, you could become one of the best in the world just simply by trying more than the rest, right? Like yeah. a lot of the old guard pros would show up to events and they'd go out drinking the night before and, you know, they'd show up the next morning and still be able to compete. And, you know, they weren't really taking care of their bodies during the week and all that kind of stuff. So if you were a young kid, all you had to do was just like treat it a little more professionally than they did and you were going to pass them, right? Yeah. But now we're to a point to where, that's pretty much the meta across the pro division is all the, all the players are really taking care of their bodies. They're, you know, treating it like a real sport, but there is still that next level that's not tapped into. And that's like the scouting and the, the way that you drill in your process mm -hmm. in preparing for an event. There's still all that, that like is separating pro players from other pro players now, you know, and I can't wait for us to take that next step where it's like across the board, all the pro players are doing that. And it forces you yeah. to, you know, now you have three or four people on your coaching staff instead of one or two. And, you know, you have someone that works on just your, your gun fighting and someone that works on just your off the break shooting and, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Someone that works on your aggression, your, your defensiveness, like once paintball gets there, that'll be pretty epic. But yeah. you know, the, the hurricanes have like taken a step in that direction, you know, and it's yeah. awesome to see. Mm -hmm. Dang, that's dope. Now for you guys, you guys come in like with like plays or like a, or like formations, I guess. But then, like, how many do you, like, do you have? Like, auto, like, for example, like, audibles, like, for example, like, we have, like, like, a, uh, like, gas calls where it's just like, hey, this is what, what we're running, like, on the field, like, hey, two, two, two. Like, do you guys have that? Or yeah. like, is more get in the huddle. Okay. This is what we're doing. Boom. Now, mm -hmm. like, yeah. This is the formation we're about to do. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we'll have like maybe 15 different variations of plays at least, but yeah. um, a lot of it will be on the box, right? So if we're on the box and we have a play, you know, we can look down and be like, Oh no, there's two over here. So you shoot this way instead of that way. Right. Well, and we have yeah. codes that simplify that audible, right. You know, just gotcha. pizza, pepperoni, like whatever it is, you know, just, yeah. we have codes that'll simplify that exact thing. Um, our team, I think, you know, a lot of teams are, you know, a little different in how they run it, but our team runs a little more of like a read, read offense where we kind of have our play. Um, we'll have little variations of it, but then it's like, if they go here, then we do that. You know, it's that kind of thing. But then we yeah. also have, we have tempo plays where it's, you know, we want to heavily push one side, you know, we want the other team to feel us on, on this side so that it can set up something. The next point, the next point, you know, maybe we'll go attack the other side or maybe we'll attack the same exact side again because they think we're going to attack the other side. You know, it all comes down to scouting and what yeah. you think they're going to do. Sometimes you're kind of just rolling the dice, hoping you get get you, you, you guess right, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's it's pretty in depth. Ty, how about you guys? What's uh, what is your guys playbook look like? Yeah, very similar, actually. Um, and it's all about 
pressure. You know, like you got to pick where you're going to apply pressure. You have to understand the cadence of each layout to each layout. And that's one of the very unique things about paintball is each layout has its own cadence, its own rhythm. There's its own like it's like almost like you got to learn a new dance every time. Like you're doing the yeah. salsa over here. I got the Dougie fresh over here. You know, I'm doing. But it's like you got to learn these different cadences and each layout is so unique. So what we found is the players that have obviously been playing paintball the longest and in various formats and styles are the quickest at figuring out these cadences and knowing how to apply themselves out there on the field, knowing exactly which zones we got to shoot, where we got to have zone coverage when we break out in 30 seconds into the play. We got to make sure we watch this so we could set this move up. There's a lot of different variants in uh, just quick decision making, and a lot of it is audible off of the read of watching your players uh, that you're going to play against and then figuring out the best way to beat them, kind of use whatever they're using, try to use it against them, you know, and be really crafty in your choices, knowing who you're playing against and the style and the cadence that they like to play. So there's, there's a lot that goes into like the decision making on play calls, but um, a good portion of it is like the best players. Like I said, they've played for so long in so many different styles. They're making it up on the fly. Like I know, you well, not necessarily on the fly because you want to have some scripted plays that are yeah. like everybody can digest. But then once it gets into like, we talked about it in our goat show, actually at the, the monthly meeting for our community, there's like these layers to the game. You have your breakout. That's one layer. Your second layer is the, the next move that sets up the, the final layer of the, the play when we're all at the fifties and, and things are getting kind of dense. And you got to know what to do in each one of those layers of those moves and how you're going to break a game open. So those types of things, they just come from like having to be on that layout and just repetition, repetition, yeah. see, seeing all the different nuances. And then you can pick up like these trick plays and start to apply those and make those moves out there. It's literally just reps, huh? Just yeah. reps, just getting, once you yeah. just keep repping it, repping it, repping it, it just comes to second nature. But That's like right. for, for, um, for that, is it every every tournament just a brand new layout? And yeah. Then, and like, how mm -hmm. long? Isn't it like the week of one week? Two weeks, bro. I would love week. to hear your input on uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> one week. You oh one man. Week. It yeah. used to be two. So you know, yeah. we used to have two weekends to get ready yeah. for the for the tournament, right? So you would, yeah. the, the layout would release on a Wednesday. You would have that weekend, the whole next week. And then that weekend. So really you can, it would get released on Wednesday. Usually you could go and get a drill day on, you know, Thursday, then play again, Saturday, Sunday, have Monday off, go like Tuesday, Thursday, and then, you know, Saturday, Sunday again. And then the Wednesday before the event, everyone practices. So you could get like nine, 10 days on the field. To me, I always thought that that really helped create high level moves because the smarter yeah. players have more time on the field and they really figure out these really dynamic and, and you and creative opportunities. Um, the argument on the other side is that players figure the field out and they figure out how to lock it down. I, to me, I don't buy that side of it. I, I think players find ways to break through that kind of stuff. And actually yeah. when you don't know as much as when you slow down, cause you're like unsure if someone's in a certain spot watching a zone or, you know, whatever it may be. So they shortened it to one week. So we have one week to, to get ready now in Europe, they do four weeks, you know, so four weeks. they yeah, four weeks. Yeah. So to me, <laughs> I, I think it's a really cool thing and they've wanted to do blind layouts to where you just show up to the tournament and that's the first time you ever see the field. That would be crazy. It'd yeah. be crazy. You, you think it'd be cool, crazy, cool or crazy bad. Ah. Honestly, honest opinion. I think if you guys are already having a week and you already have that field that like that second guess, mm -hmm. like, Oh, like if you're not comfortable, like obviously you said if you had nine weeks or if you had a uh, two weeks or nine yeah. days, you yeah. would be, you, you would for sure be comfortable being able to create plays outside yes. of what you already learned. Yeah. But if it's yeah. blind, I think you'll be a lot of just mess shoot. Yeah, I think you're like I, guessing, I you're you know, probably, yeah. I don't think that's professional. Like you're guessing out there. I think it's such a cool thing of our sport is that all these organizations have a couple weeks to get ready for this tournament, you know, and that's the story. It's like who prepared better, who has better strategy, who did the right drills, you know, who prepared yeah. in the right way, you know, you're going to yeah. come in and showcase it. Whereas like blind layout, you show up and it's like, ah, 
uh, I think I'll go. I'm just going to close my eyes and run, you know, <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> hope, hope no. I get lucky. But Bro, the, that feels that's yeah, just kind of just the, like the, uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, shoot. Ty. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. I was just going to say like, it's kind of just like, uh, like football for, so like if we just showed it or actually the first game of the first game of season, okay. We'll just say like, you could be a whole brand new coaching staff. You can have an idea or like say we're playing the Panthers and they have a brand new coaching staff. You can have an idea of what the old film had, but like, it's still like, yeah. they could have changed it. They could have had a whole yeah. new game plan. Like you never know. So like mm-hmm. that, that's kind of like how it is. Like, yeah, if we just bit. showed up, if we just showed up blind, a blind, uh, yeah. Layout. Yeah. Like, blind no, layout. you just have no, you just have no, uh, it's film, really no, any- <laughs> but what, whose calls are better. It's really going to be whose calls are better and who can execute better. Yeah, like, yeah. I think that that would be kind of cool. That'd be kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean, when you when you sell it like that, that's like actually kind of cool. But I don't know if it's whose calls are better. It's who gets lucky. You know, it's like yeah. I made this call, but I I didn't make it based off what I thought they were gonna. I have no intel, no data on what they're gonna do. You know, again, exactly. I just for me, I, I look at our sport and anything we can do that adds to the preparation, I think helps legitimize us. You know, so anything that takes away from preparation, I think puts us in the other direction. You know, so, so like to me, I'm like, let's have two or three weeks on the layout. Let's really get down and dirty on this thing. Yeah. You know, um, I actually think two weeks is a good number because it's, you know, it does get a little redundant, but I, I think it's, you know, that's kind of that sweet spot in our sport. Yeah. yeah. So we have the layout for our tournament is dropping next week and then we will start rolling into practice and play as yeah. much paintball as we possibly can in the seven days you know, leading into the tournament. And that's kind of how mm-hmm. it goes for pro paintball right now. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it is. It's wild. And they you have, gotta, where, where's, uh, where's the next tournament at? It's going to be in Texas. We're going to Texas. Yeah, Texas. Yep. <laughs> yes, sir. Yep. We're at Houston? It's uh, Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. Dallas? Yep. Hey. Yeah. Are you excited? I know. Yep, we're stoked to get after it. And we've got a lot of preparation to do in that time frame too. Once that layout drops, it's like nonstop homework, you know, nonstop yeah. looking at the field, nonstop yeah. trying to get on the field, play it, get as many repetitions as we can so that we can start to figure out that flow and like the cadence and the way it's going to to move out there. That's true. Damn, yeah. Hell yeah. Now for yeah. bracket wise, mm-hmm. when does that come out? And then when can you start looking at yeah. the squads that you guys are going to play? Right after the event, the once the tournament finishes, we yeah. get the brackets and can already see like the next oh. event of who we're gonna play. Yeah. Okay. Now for you guys, are you guys automatically like just looking at the rosters? Like I guess mm-hmm. before the event, like you guys kind of like okay, this is what they do, or like just have a like a idea of what each team is known yeah. for. Like what's their theme? Yeah. Or like is it more just shoot like oh we know what these guys are doing. No, we'll you're just right. see them. We'll just see them when. See them yeah. if we see them in the brackets. The, the play, you're right. There's certain teams that have a certain style. You know, this team might like to play a little bit slower and more, you know, grounded in the back than this team likes to punch super heavy, super fast, and they don't stop, you know. Um, or you get the, the in-between where they have a couple really solid players who will punch you in the face if you let them get down a wire, and then maybe some of the other players are a little bit, you know, more methodical, but you do have to know the players. So yes, knowing the rosters really well, um, the up and coming pros, there's a couple new pro teams in the league this year. So starting to understand the way that they play and the way that their camps approach the game, um, doing all that homework, and then just going in there with your best game plans and shout out to our coach, Ryan Smith, you were talking about play calling and running audibles. Um, he is a phenomenal coach and he implements so many creative ways to get us to come together and just, you know, go out there and kick ass. That's what we got to do. That's it. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yep. Yeah. You even, you even kind of play with the schedule a little bit too, right? Like, um, you know, at the next event we play X factor fit iron men and extreme and yeah. you know, you can, you can basically gauge it's all done by seating. So, you know, like in what, uh, 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 succession you're going to play each team but you know teams are going to be scouting you throughout the event so yeah. you know if you're going to match up a certain way with one of the teams you want to say okay we want to play this team like this so that we can play the next team like that you know and that might just be a difference in your game plan on attacking one side versus the other and then you want to set the stage so like your final game ideally you're three and oh 
right in the prelims and you go into that final game which should be your hardest game and you kind of get to experiment a little bit and it's like yeah. if, if if you win that game it's a bonus because you didn't show your you know what you really can do you were experimenting still and then it's a fresh slate on sunday and you have to keep all that into consideration like a lot of teams will show their best cards in the prelims and yeah. You know, some teams just have to, they, they can't reserve things. You know, they have to show their best cards to have a chance at getting out of the prelims, but ideally you're like kind of hold on on to stuff. And actually Russian Legion is one of the best organizations of all time. They will literally not use something until the finals and they'll, they'll throw something at you. That's so crazy and doesn't even make sense, but it works, yeah. you know? And it's like, they, they kind of, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, kind of wrote the book on that too, of like, really being unpredictable and saving stuff, you know, a field would play a certain way throughout the whole event. And then you'd, you'd get to the finals uh, against them and they're doing something completely different from what they've done the entire tournament, which is like, you know, it's almost a double-edged sword. Like you, you're so yeah. you, this, this game plan got you here. Why go away from it? But then, you know, it's that confidence in your preparation and, and buy into the organization, you know, that like, okay, we're, we're willing to roll the dice and change it up here in the biggest game. Um, but you want to be mindful of that, you know, any divisional teams that are listening to this right now, or, you know, even pro teams, like these are the kind of things that you want to be mindful of is understanding that the, the tournament kind of evolves, you know, as it goes on and you need to be yeah. able to be the one leading how the field is playing, not playing catch up, you know, that makes sense. So yeah. yeah, Tyler, what was it like going, that was your first pro tournament ever, right? In Vegas. First one. Yeah, what was oh, it yeah. like being at uh, Major League Paintball and watching that at the tournament there? Bro, it was fire, man. Because like yeah. when we walked in, when we walked in, we were like, "Oh, dang, that's probably the pro field over there." It was yeah. one of six. I was like, "Dang!" <laughs> like I didn't, like I expected it to be big, but like it was, it was, it was, it was yeah. an amazing. It was, it was freaking, it was dope, bro. And then yeah. seeing like seeing like everyone's skills and stuff, like trying to, trying to learn some stuff myself. So like, it was just like, just really just taking notes, being that sponge, being that sponge, shoot, really everywhere I went, just like learning from, learning from you guys, what you guys were doing and then learning from everyone else. It was, it, it, it was dope. It was a great experience. Well, I for got, sure go again, man. You got two okay coaches right here. And if you ever need anything, <laughs> we're we got to, you, bro. Yeah, man. Oh, Absolutely. That's it, man. You get it yeah, there. man. I wish you guys could make it to world cup. World cup is like a whole another level. It is yeah. magical, but it's like right in the heart of your guys' season. Yeah. No way. Yeah. It's yeah. in November. Yeah. It's like, like the first week in November, you know, yeah. Damn. I, I know thinking, he's like, Where, where's man. it at? It's in Orlando. Oh, he's considering it. <laughs> he's like, well, if I got a game, if I got a game on Sunday, I could get out there Friday. <laughs> we got Saturday off. <laughs> Yo, what? That'd be yeah. crazy. It, it, bro, oh, it's yeah. it is like you walk around World Cup, dude, and it's yeah. impressive. You know, it's impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's there's dope. like 800 teams there last year. You know, impressive. Teams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh damn! Hey, wait, didn't didn't you guys win? Dynasty didn't. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's big, man. It's a huge tournament. At That's some dope. point, um, you know, down the line, you definitely got to drop into a World Cup and check that out. Bro, what? Yeah. Have yeah. to. Have 100%. To. I got, got to got experience that. 100%, yeah. dude. Now, is, yeah. the, is for the World Cup, is it every year? Or because yep. the World Cup? That's mm -hmm. every year. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it's a little misleading with the name. I don't know why, but paintball has called it the world. <laughs> paintball has called it the World Cup uh, yeah. since like the start of paintball. You know, yeah. um, and we do get teams from all over the world that come and yeah. play. But you're not yeah. playing for your country, so it's not really a World Cup. Gotcha, it's just gotcha, it, gotcha. it's like basically it's our Super Bowl essentially. And I do okay. think they're kind of in the process of changing it to like World Championship or some, something, yeah. right? Because they've realized now, like, yeah, it doesn't quite make sense. Um, but yeah. it's the biggest event, right? And so in the pro division, we normally have 20 pro teams. And at the World okay. Cup, we bring in uh, two European teams, a Latin American team, and maybe it's three European teams. It was going to be like a Southeast Asian team as well. Yeah. But, you know, that didn't end up happening because of COVID. Um, so they bring on, a, you know, like the best teams from from different regions yeah. to compete in the the, the main dope. event. Um, and you know, that's like the bigger grand prize. It's for a four day event instead of three days. It's, it's a okay. spectacle, dude. It's sick. Oh, that's dope, man. Yeah. It's yeah. really cool. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, sure, you already sure. know you got VIP treatment if you ever want to go out there. And actually, um, Major League Paintball wants me to get dialed in with you so we can send you some merch over too. Shout out to Tom Cole. He wants to make hey. sure that you're decked out and have, you know, some nice little Major I League pre- Paintball. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. That yeah. shit would be dope. Love, love the rep, rep you guys, man. Yeah, man. And <laughs> you, were, uh, you were at the Summit Awards too, and you got to see that out in Vegas. What was that like? That was a pretty cool that, experience. That was an experience. When I tell you, yeah. man, that it was, it was so dope just because like it was the venue fire yeah it and was then, it was so shoot cool. me then uh shoot tyler being able to show me around show freaking yep. me being able to meet everybody it was it was, it was dope man just seeing yes, like sir. how everyone like how for you that is the end of winning but then everyone's just mm-hmm. freaking everyone like a big family and it freaking it was dope yeah. just seeing everyone just mingle freaking just have just have a great time yeah that was our first time ever having anything like that. And it was really well done. Like the, the branding looked phenomenal all around on the outside, the courtyard. And then Bro, they had, what? you know, they had the cabanas. So we had uh, everybody having fun up there. Everyone's mingling. And you're right. It is a family. And it's one of the greatest families in the world. Paintball is special in so many ways. It, it's really saved a lot of people's lives. It's given a, a lot of people a, a way to connect with their community, to become healthier. Um, it has so many great attributes with even just like mental stress and like just being able to get out and go and play and have fun. And just kind of like football, it's it's uh, like you said earlier, it's like a kid's game, you know? It's like we started, you started playing football when you were just a youngster and it's provided so many beautiful things in your life. And the same thing has happened for us. We've been so blessed to play this amazing game and the fruits of it have been like truly unbelievable. You can't even, I mean, I could have never expected I'd be sitting here speaking with all three of you when I was just a little kid playing paintball out in Modesto, California, you know? And then now we've, we just make it, you know, we keep applying ourselves every day, just keep, uh, keep moving it forward. Bro, straight blessing, man. Yeah, really. It's, it's crazy. Really, though. Absolutely. Dope, dude. Yep. Ty, if you don't mind, man, we uh, we have a Discord, and they are really excited to oh, yeah. you know have you on the show. So they posted a bunch of questions. You mind if we uh, ask oh, you yeah. some of those? Heck oh, yeah. Dude. All right. Yeah, tight. I mean, we got to get them in the Discord. You, you love paintball. You should be hey, in bro. PTG world and hang out in there. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, you, you let me, you let me, or you shoot, you let me know and send a link. Cause shoot, yeah. I got my, I got the discord up right now on my, hey, uh, you got video, discord right? up right now. Come on, I'm, I, I'll, I'll, I'll send play, you a link. I was saying, please, you're uh, playing uh rainbow six. Okay. Earlier, so. <laughs> See, my buddy, man. I'm a, I'm gonna send you a link for sure. All right. We got Dylan Boyum. Uh, Tyler, if you had to assemble a paintball squad of current NFL pros, who are you rolling with? So f- you and four others. <laughs> Dang. Um, well, I heard Demo. I heard Demo's good. Oh, what? Okay. He's been playing. They, they, he's been they, playing. They were, I've heard. I've heard. I've heard good things. Oh yeah, yeah. Things. he's he's a beast. He's getting it. Yeah. Damn. Uh, I might just have to go with my dogs, man. Drake. Yeah. Um, Drake London. Yeah, I gotta get one of the O linemen. I go with uh, with Chris Lindstrom. There we go. Like, he, he's a very, he's a very nice, he's he's a very nice guy. But I feel like there'll be a, yeah, he, he has a little demon in him. <laughs> he, has little, he has a little dog in him in the, in the field, man. There you for go. Some reason, for some reason, he he handles that. And then yeah. um, we'll go, we'll go Kirk. Yeah, we'll go Kirk and Dez. Get him out there. You need we'll you need a QB we'll go, we'll on the field. Yeah. Hey, We'll go two quarterback. We'll go Kirk and uh, Desmond. I mean, and then John Fitz, John Fitzpatrick. So tight end action. I, okay, you just picked like seven guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all, all my guys, man. Come yeah. All my guys. All my guys. Give me everyone. Run it. Dude, that I love it. Fun. Nice. Well, hey, we got to make that a reality. And if you guys ever need help tight. with paintball, um, we have so many different avenues that we can help you guys get out there and have some fun, you know? And that's great team know. bonding as well for the it guys. It is. Facts. Uh, all fair. right, we got. Um, Osborne for this. Tyler, do you have any funny or crazy stories from your rookie season? I hear vets can be some real pranksters. <laughs> ah, you, you know, you can't, uh, you can't be a rookie without vets, man. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I, I, was, I was a pretty good, I was a pretty good rook, man. I, nice. I think the, the vets in the room, like CP, mm-hmm. he doesn't really like to give me credit, but I, 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 was, <laughs> I was a good rook, man. I nice. think the worst, the worst, no, there was a crazy story. No, it didn't happen to me because I was a good rook. But yeah. another guy, there was another guy that uh, 
he ended up getting his stuff dumped in the ice tub because he didn't buy snacks. Oh no! For Ooh. for for the room. So he like Ooh. before like thirty minutes before practice, everyone's getting warmed up. He just sees all his stuff in the ice tub. Oh, You're just no. like, Dang. like all your gear you got to put on. All oh. the gear, pads and everything, <laughs> pads, helmet, everything. The helmet, bro. Oh, what? Oh, that's brutal. Cleats, everything. Yo. <laughs> everything. <laughs> I was like, damn. damn. You just, just got to be a good rook, man. That's, that's all you got to do. Damn, yeah. You're saying who, but is that is that player still on the team? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, nice. Nice. There we go. That's my dog, man. That's, that's my dog. He, 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 had, he had to learn the hard way, man. Yeah, Bijan. it's all good fun. Is it Bijan? <laughs> no, 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 no. He, he, he was a good rook, man. <laughs> okay, all right. Man, yeah, you got to show up with snacks. You know, you got to yeah, show up with snacks. You got to show up with snacks, especially yeah. during season. Come on. Come on, like preseason all that. Come on, yeah, come on. You gotta, you just gotta do your rookie duties, man. That's it. Yeah, easy. That's it. That's it. All right, Lurt's paintball. He goes, Tyler, huge Falcons fan. Been my favorite team since I was a kid. I was in attendance when you broke the Falcons rookie rushing record in 2022 in LA. Yeah. Paintball is such a unique sport. What part of paintball is is most attractive to you, and why? What parts of paintball and football overlap the most? Mm. Shoot! Shout out to my boys. East Los Mafiosos up yeah. in uh up in Cali, man. So honestly, they them allowing me to to train or to really just practice with them. And then uh, my guy Kendrick up at um Mountain View Paintball, Mountain View Paintball in Rancho. Yeah. Shout out to them. Yeah. So uh he he like he's the coach. He ends up coaching. So like him being able to just teach me teach me some stuff and then um shoot me just being able honestly just being like like I said earlier, just being a sponge, being able to just like learn new techniques learn oh hey i need to tilt my foot a certain way so I, i'm able to like go across this bunk or like just mm -hmm. um go one to two abc and all of that so it's just like like those little things and then just like oh i like there was a point like when i first started i kept getting hit off break because i tried to be the one or like he he wanted me hey try the one i ended up getting just kept getting hit off off blank like couldn't even mm -hmm. get to the bunker i was just like i was just like Grr! Can't catch a break. And yeah. NFL then, NFL speed can't outrun a paintball. You know, it, can, they, it cannot. Demo was so, saying the same thing. David was saying the same thing on here. Bro, he's like, what? He's, it's freaking yeah. crazy. Because yeah. I'm just like, damn, I thought I was moving. And next minute, I'm over getting hit on my inner thigh. That sucks. Or like the yeah. inner, like the little inner quad, whatever. Bro, that 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 and getting hit in the back has to be the worst. I the worst know. Thing pain. It's got to it be. Is. But like, I think uh, the communication aspect aspect of things is for sure like the thing that overlaps just mm -hmm. because like you have to be communicated on offense defense special teams even for you guys all all five being communicated a one yeah. guy got hit out oh there's only four of us okay that changes that changes a little bit like we yeah. can't really push up you got to hold like you got to worry like if uh, the one gets hit and you're the two if the one gets hit a re repeat that to the other guys and then now you have to watch it he's the widest yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 Cause like, hey, you want to like focus on their next widest guy because that that's yeah. your biggest threat at that moment. If you lose your, your wide guy. Yeah, no, exactly. So it's kind of just it. like, it's just a little bit, man. We're, yeah. We're still yeah. Right. yeah. We're still yeah. Right. Damn dude. Yeah. Love no, it. You're right. Love and it. It's pressure and angles. Like really that's what mm -hmm. it comes down to. And then connecting, oh, put the pieces together, apply pressure where it needs to go and get the angle so you can make shots. But it's a, uh, it's that's like it. chess. Chess out there with comms. All right, we got Chess Patty. with comms. Yeah. We got Patty Rice. Uh, Tyler is a pro athlete who has access to awesome training facilities. If you were to be able to bring one thing over to pro paintball, whether it's trainers, equipment, food, that just makes your work to prepare for games smoother, what would it be? And what do you think would elevate paintball athletes to the next level? Mm, I think, wait. For your guys' trainers, mm -hmm. do you guys have like like medicals or like like for trainers, like what does that consist of? Me so, and uh, Google. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Shit, that, that'll be that'll be number one right there, man. I think uh, mm -hmm. just having like uh, like physical therapy or like just yeah. having someone like treat your body and stuff, like mm. like I think that's probably like I think honestly I think uh having that like for example like, i think you guys said what a europe squad had like a whole segment and like they do practices together and yeah all right. of that i right. think just having i think having that once the team can just play together i like, can just have like multiple reps i guess 
Yeah. I think that would probably, I think that's pretty good. And that pretty would kind of answer the other question of elevating paintball athletes to the next level, mm-hmm. because, yeah. you know, if you have an entire team that are super athletically sound and everyone's bodies are just peaked, it's going to show, you know, it's going to just like naturally same thing on an NFL squad. You know, if, if the squad is peaked out and they're everyone's doing everything possible to bring that uh, physical stature to all the highest levels, it's going to yep. show out there on that football field. No, exactly. Not even yeah. just physical, freaking the mental side as well. Yes. If you're if you ever like between football and paintball, if everyone's just mental and then everyone's fit, everyone's taking care of their body. And everyone has that mental side. Everyone's on the same picture. Like, no one can yeah. it's gonna be hard stopping you. That's right. And that's like what we were talking about earlier. You got to marry those two. And the teams that marry those two together and can do that, that's the, you're going to have a good go at, at going far in the tournament and winning it. No, exactly. For sure. All right. My, uh, my last question here from the Discord is from Young Stevie. Tyler, after attending your first NXL event in Vegas, what was something you might have expected to see or have at the event that wasn't there? Mm. There, was a lot of, there was a lot of snake fights, man. I didn't, I, I didn't expect yeah. to... Is that, is, that what, is that what he's asking? Like, kind of like that? Like in yeah, the like, game? Yeah, yeah. What was... Uh, what was something you might have expected to see or have mm-hmm. and wasn't there? So, you know, showing up to a first national event, you know, did you think there was going to be a bigger stadium or, you know, I think that, that direction. Mm. Um, honestly, I didn't ex- like, I expected it to be big, but like I was walking, I felt like I was walking forever. I had the vendors, <laughs> had the vendors right here, I had two other fields. And then that was like, we're like D4, D5 teams. And I was like, damn, I thought this was the D1 team. Freaking hella yeah. people were, it was just like, hello. Like it was, it was yeah. big, bro. It was a big, big okay. event. Okay. So like, I think that was like, I think. So it exceeded expectations then. Oh, yeah. hands down. Yeah. Okay. Like, wow. I was like, cause like, I never knew like how they were going to get the fields. Like I was just thinking like, yeah. Oh, it'll probably be like ASG or jungle. Like we'll just have two fields and then, or like two or three fields. And then just yeah. everyone just cycles through. Yeah. Like there was like six fields. Um, I had to walk like damn near eight miles to get to the pro field. I was like, damn, it's cool, man. Yeah, yeah I think they had they had spot. like eight or eight or nine fields for sure. And that was the, nine. a lot. Yeah, it was the biggest uh, <laughs> opening tournament of a season ever, too. So that one was we had a lot of people that showed out for that event. No, that's that. Yeah. Oh, I didn't expect. I thought it was going to be like grass or mm-hmm. or something, but it was just straight dirt. Kind of got my kicks dirty. Yeah, I, 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 I wasn't mad about it, but it was just like, dang. Yeah, I, 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 I shouldn't. And then we wore white. Me and my girl wore white, and then oh, the lady, yeah. she was like, she was like, you guys are brave. I was like, I mean, but, we shouldn't yeah. be getting hit, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't think we should be getting hit. <laughs> oh no! I was like, yeah, that's the first thing you got to prep. Like the first, bro. first tournament my girl came to, I was like, babe, wear stuff that you do not mind throwing in the trash Monday morning. <laughs> Bro, well, that's it. <laughs> hey, throw it in the trash or just don't mind freaking triple washing because yeah, can yeah. get on there, man. man Bro, what? Well, Ty, we can't thank you enough for taking the time to sit down here with us and uh, we wish you so much success out there with the Falcons this season. Mm-hmm. And if you ever need anything, if you ever uh, need help on the paintball field or want to go play, we got your back for life, my man. Hey, my dog, man. Yeah, I appreciate let's go, you, baby. Boys, bro. No, yeah, likewise, yeah, absolutely, man. bro. Yeah. yeah I'm going to yeah. send you a link to the Discord. As soon as we hang up here, I'm, I'm going to go find your IG, uh, give you a follow there as well. But I'm going to send you a link so we can get you in there. Yeah, bro. Hey, say less, man. Yes, nice. sir. Nice. Hell you, yeah. Man. We appreciate yeah. you, bro. Yeah, no, I appreciate safe. you, my boy. Yes, we sir. love you, dude. Keep ca- hey, keep crushing you. it. Let's love go. You guys, man. No, let's good go. luck next week. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'm excited to shoot. Yeah. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It yeah, it'll be in two weeks, okay. though. So we have two weeks, uh, right. practice this weekend, no layout. Then practice next weekend with a layout. And then the third okay. weekend will be in Texas. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll keep yeah. you updated. No, say and, less, man. And we'll get you the in. info. Exactly. Yeah, we'll get you that Go Sports info so you can actually watch the tournament. I know you'll be training and everything, but we'll get you the link so that you can uh, get in there and watch the pro paintball. No, I got to stay tapped into my guys, man. Yes. Got to stay tapped in. Let's go. Yeah. We'll be supporting Likewise. you all season. Keep kicking ass, Absolutely. Dude. I appreciate that, my guys. Yep. Let's go. Peace. Peace.
But All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to ptgpaintball.com. Click the orange Patreon link in the corner and support the show. We greatly appreciate it. We have tiers as low as $1.99 a month. That is nothing, guys. And it'll give you access to the Discord where you get access to the players chat and get to mingle with the entire PTG community. We have tons of different pros in there. Tyler and myself are very active, and it's an amazing way to support the show we also have amazing other tiers if you want to be one of the best want to be a goat sign up for the goat tier it's the greatest way to support us and each month we do a private live stream show one-on-one kind of thing to where it's just the goats and tyler myself will bring in some special guests every now and then but you get to ask us questions in real time live on the air and you get lots of inside juicy news that we don't share uh on the show so as always we will see you guys very soon